Hey, what's up guys? This is Jared from The Mystic Guy, here to help you through the awakening process, increase your yoga meditation practice, but also give you tips on how to live the most healthiest and happiest holistic life possible. Guys, I just want to wish you a happy New Year's 2018. I'm really excited about it. I hope you guys are excited too. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go into perfectionism. This has been a thing that I've had to deal with in my own life, and it's something that I know is really, really big, and it's a problem out in the culture, and it's causing a lot of anxiety and stress. So first I'm going to get into the signs of perfectionism, then I'm going to go into where it stems from, and finally I'm just going to share with you how to move on from it because it can create a lot of self-destructive patterns and make life a little bit more challenging and less enjoyable. So let's get into it. Alright, so what are some signs of perfectionism? Uh, number one, you feel like you're never good enough no matter what. You feel like you always have to perform. Now there's something that I want to make clear here though. It's okay to have high standards. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, man, like I always try to be perfect in everything I do, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a perfectionist, right? You can have high standards and there's nothing wrong with having high standards. However, a perfectionist will look at their standards and they'll do the best that they can and they won't be proud of themselves when they don't do the best that they can. So I'm going to give you an example here. So let's say for instance, uh, you know, there's a perfectionist in a class and he gets an A- minus on his test and he wanted an A+. Plus. And then there's just a kid who has high standards and he gets an A- minus as well and doesn't get the A+. Plus. The kid who has high standards will say to himself, man, I wish I got that A+, plus, but you know what, I did my best. I still got an A-, minus. I, you know, I did, I did my best and they'll still love themselves and they'll still support themselves and they'll just be like, hey, you know what, I'll try, well, you know, I did everything I could. You know, I did my best and that's how, it, that's how it turned out. They won't allow the external variables or factors to phase them. They'll, they realize that they did the best that they could and they're still proud of themselves and their performance. Their perfectionist, however, will look at the A- minus and they'll say, you know what, I gotta do better than that. That's not good enough and they'll actually punish themselves and they'll punish themselves through self-destructive patterns, whether that means working hard, um, getting no sleep, and just pushing themselves past healthy limits, or they'll actually do unconscious things like, you know, get drunk or whatever, and, you know, those self-destructive patterns, those typical ones. So there's a clear difference between having high standards for yourself, which is, uh, which is good. I, I have high, I like to think that I have high standards for myself, but you know, that's good to have high standards, but then, you know, uh, being a perfectionist is, is a whole nother ball game, but there is some similarity too. So it's easily to get confused. So I just wanted to clearly draw those contrasts. Uh, number two, you feel like you have to outperform everyone and you get jealous when others do better than you. Now, one, I want to say that I don't think there's anything wrong with jealousy. A lot of times we give jealousy a negative connotation, um, but there can be different types of jealousy. There's like the jealousy, and I think this is the bad jealousy, where you look at a person, they perform better than you, and you don't like them because they perform better than you. That's a bad jealousy. A good jealousy is saying, hey, wow, they're crushing it, they're killing it, uh, I want to do that too. That's just called inspiration. I look at people all the time and I'm like, dude, I'm kind of jealous of their life. They got this, they got that, they, they seem to have the whole package, man. And some of them really do have the whole package, and I'm jealous of that. And so I look at them and I say, well, you know, what are they doing that I'm not doing, and how can I perform better and be inspired by them? And so that's what, you know, so then I'll start taking the actions that they do and see what works for me. That's inspiration. There's nothing wrong with inspiration. That's a good thing. But if you are looking at other people as a threat to your performance, then chances are you have that perfectionist complex. And that's not, that, that's something that you want to check into and kind of, kind of work out through your being. If you're looking at other people and you're seeing their performances and they're performing better than you and you're not wishing them like, if you're not looking at them in a sense where, I, wow, I'm being inspired by this person, but you're looking at them in a sense that I want to do better than them because I want to defeat them because I want to prove that I'm better, then that's a perfectionist complex. That is stemming from some sort of uh, lack within us. And that stems a lot of the times from just growing up in homes where people were never loved or cared for, or shown unconditional love just for the sake of who they were. If you grow up in a home where you're not shown that affection and love just naturally, then what happens is the mind develops this story, and this is all happening at the subconscious level. We're not aware of this. The mind starts developing the subconscious story that says, 
wow, okay, uh, I'm only being giving attention or love or affection or whatever when I'm performing good. So you know what, I have to perform good in order to get those things. And so then what happens is it creates this anxiety where wherever we don't perform really, really well, or someone else is performing better than us that's going to take away from our attention, then we get jealous of them and we feel self-hate or, or we feel hatred towards them, uh, which is really just a reflection of our own uh, self-hate, which has been de- you know put into us by the family that we grew up in. We develop that self-hate concept uh, when you're not just shown uh, unconditional love. I can remember in instances in my own life where I was shown unconditional love and when I was shown that, I dove into the pain of all the times where I had thought or I had performed before for love or affection. So if you have an experience where you're truly shown unconditional love by another human being, um, that's going to force you to go into some pain uh, that you didn't know that was there. And that can get really, really confusing because you can say, well, I just had this amazing experience, but now all of a sudden I'm aware of all this pain within me. Why? Well, that pain was always there. It was just unconscious. But then when you get a new experience and you're shown that unconditional love, then you can see that, whoa, my whole entire life I've been performing for others, for the, you know, the, the, the affection of others, for the attention of others, but I haven't really been here for myself. All right, so now that I went into the science, uh, where does it come from? Where does this perfectionist complex stem from? A lot of times it stems from the environment that we grew up in, and that really comes back to our culture. Uh, we've grown up in a culture that's based around competition, right? It's kind of the nature of capitalism. And there's two, there's, I could go into a long rant about this, but there's, there's good things about this. One, when you have a highly competitive environment, you're guaranteed to have the highest quality product at the top, whether that's human being or whether that's a product that you're developing. By the very nature of survival of the fittest, uh, the, the fittest comes out at the top and that's the highest quality product and then that goes out to the masses. Now, on the individual level, this can be bad though because then people are highly competitive and they can push themselves and this is when humans end up doing crazy things, which we see in our environment all around the world today. But what happens is this perfectionist complex can be developed or injected into us from the culture that we grow up in. If the culture is saying, hey, you have to be better, better, and better, and there's no end, no end to it, and it's just a never-ending hamster wheel, and you're taking in that message, then naturally you think to yourself, okay, I just got to continually perform and be good over and over and over again. And people get caught up in that, but it's really a never-ending hamster wheel. And then the second place it comes from is, like I said a little bit before earlier, is whatever childhood uh, home you grew up in, whatever environment that was. Maybe you got a, attention when you really performed well, or maybe this could even be worse, I think, you got attention for not performing well at all. I think what it comes down to is just having needs met. And so, you know, having love, care, and affection or attention is a natural human need. So when you don't get shown that, or you do get shown that, but you only get shown it when you don't perform well, well, then you're not going to perform well in anything at all. All right, so now how do we move on from this complex? How do you step in from uh, living from a space of lack and saying, oh, I have to perform well all the time to just a space of ease? When you can integrate this experience and you can go into that pain of that perfectionist complex that's supporting it, um, you'll find that there's a lot more ease and relaxation in your life in everything that you do. And the reason for this is there's nothing at stake anymore. You know, when you were doing things uh, conditionally, when you said, oh, I have to perform and do well for this, this, and this in order to get that love and affection, uh, what's at stake? You know, you think love and affection and all these conditional things are at stake. But then once you actually dive into that pain and you realize that, oh, wait, these things can be shown to me unconditionally, uh, then that kind of eases up your being and you won't feel nearly as anxious and worried all the time. All right, number one, first you have to go into the emotions of the memory. So the memory is locked within our body, and so you have to go into that experience of, you know, for a lot of us, it's a childhood experience. Oh man, you know, what was it in my life that, uh, where I was only shown these things that I wanted, these basic human needs, uh, based off of performance. You have to go into the experience. If you don't go into the experience, then that is going to continually rule and dictate how you interact with the world and how you think about it as well. This can be extremely painful and hurtful, but it's necessary. You have to go into that pain, you have to dive into it, integrate it, and allow it to propel you on to a new type of interaction and being in the world. 
All right, and then number two, we have to acknowledge, once we acknowledge that pain and we integrate it and we go into it, then we have to start the new belief system. And the new belief system is that you're already worthy of that love. You know, you're already worthy of that love, care, and that affection. It's not something that necessarily has to be based off of conditional reasons. And it's interesting, once you make that shift, I could see in my own life, once I made that shift, I started getting, you know, attracting people in my life who uh, just kind of showed, just liked me for who I was. It wasn't based off of any conditions. They just accepted me how I was and there wasn't any underlying anxiety there. So just go into that, go into the pain and then once you acknowledge that pain and you in engage with it fully and you integrate those experiences and those emotions, uh, then the next thing you need to do is just start that new belief system up. Affirm that all those things, those basic human needs will be given to you uh, based off of just unconditions. There's no conditions to them. And that's unconditional love. And that's exactly what every human wants. And I, I firmly believe that's a basic human need. And a lot of us don't have it met because we just don't grow up in those environments. And then we live life in a certain way and we're not told or instructed on other ways of living. So we just do what we do. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. Thanks for joining me. Check out my free empath survival guide there in the description box below. Also check out my flavors. That's in the description box too. I use that every day. It's a really effective program that helps me out a lot. All right, guys, happy new years. I wish you an awesome 2018. I'll see you all soon with light and love. Peace. Thank you.